there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show. It's Friday. Actually, I kind of forgot yesterday that it was Friday, so I uh, said we were going to talk about pH meters. I got all the pH meters, or a bunch of them lined up here, and we are going to talk about that. But since it's Friday, on Friday, if I can, I like to do uh, an interview, and I've got a pretty good one. Scott Burke, who is a uh, one of the major guys over at Microbe Life, which is some nifty stuff that we like, was here a while back, and, and Scott does not love does not love doing video. So he, I think this video that we got, we really he really opened up to me, and we talked a lot about uh, how their product actually works. It's just pretty much straight product stuff, but interesting. And I think it may be one of the better interviews with him about Microbe Life. So I think this is going to be valuable to you. So we're going to do today the interview with Scott Burke about Microbe Life, and then. Uh, Next week, we'll talk about pH meters. We've got a lot going on next week, but we can talk about next week next week. So uh, watch the interview. Have a good weekend. I love you, and I'll see you on Monday. I got to go. Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. We're with Scott Burke from Microbe Life. He's going to tell us about Microbe Life and show us about it. So this is what we got here, I guess, is the, the Photo Plus. So w what does it do? What's uh, Why do you guys think you're making this thing? <laughs> so the, the Photo Plus... Um, depending on where you live in the country, uh -huh. has a couple of different names. They're all the same inside the bottle, but there's Photosynthesis Plus, which is the national label, Plus O for Oregon, Plus C for California, Photo Plus OK for Oklahoma, there's an Illinois. The, the contents are all the same, but depending on where you live, it might have a slightly different name depending. Um, it just has to do with state registration, not contents of the bottle. Um, the Photo Plus, so we actually, um, for many years, have produced some um, I guess you call them soil amendments, bacterial supplements, uh, uh, humic based products for commercial agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, we started in water, so water quality control, um, aquaculture, yeah. um, and crossed over to farm ag and then, and then grow ag. And um, that, that product that's been out for many, many years for commercial agriculture is used by Florida Citrus Growers Association, um, Dull Pineapple in the Philippines, places like that, tens mm -hmm. of thousands of acres. Um, this product, the Photo Plus, is actually built on top of that, that original product. So while that product is, we still produce it for, for large crop, mm -hmm. um, you know, agriculture. This is a little bit better for what we do. We've added some things to it. We've modified it a little bit over time um, to come out with this product that we, we call hydroponics, but it's really, it's all good for, um, for soil, for aquaponics, any media, it doesn't matter. Um, it's really designed to work, work in any growth, any program. Um, any growth media, any system, and with any nutrient program. It's not It's not a fertilizer, mm -hmm. um, it's not a nutrient, it's a, a biological additive. You can think of it kind of like probiotics for plants. Um, you can put all the fertilizer and amendments you want in, into, into the system, but without the right biology to make it work, to unlock it, it really does nothing for the plant. The kind of, just like you, um, if you don't have the right, the right bacteria living in your gut, you, you get no nutrient from your food, you don't digest properly. Plants are kind of the same thing. You can think of the soil or the growth media as the plant's stomach. All that work is going on outside and being okay. taken back in by the roots. And we balance the biology within the plant with what's going on around and outside the roots. So, so this is more of an in the plant kind of thing to make it work better with what's going on in the soil. Does it also work in the soil too? Or yeah, what? it's it's doing a lot. It's working at multiple levels. So uh -huh. the reason we call it Photosynthesis Plus is that it, it's got, first of all, it's got photosynthetic bacteria in it. Um, it's what gives it that color. The more light it gets, the darker it gets. Uh -huh. um, it's a special process. Nobody else works with it um, because it's very difficult to do photosynthetic bacteria. The um, uh, breathe deep. <laughs> um, there's that lovely smell. So, um, and the smell is also a byproduct of the fact that the photosynthetic bacteria that's in here is what's called vegetative. It's it's always active. There's an ecosystem in this bottle. Mm -hmm. Every bottle is fermented in the in the container, um, so it ships you know sealed. And it'll last for years unopened. It's doing its thing. Once you open it, um, it'll still last about a year as long as you don't let it get too hot. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, there's a whole ecosystem in there. This bacteria is active all the time, so it goes to work very quickly, immediately when you put it on onto the plant. Um, and there's a blend of bacteria, but those photosynthetics are what really sets it apart. Mm -hmm. So photosynthetic bacteria is better at um, using available light for photosynthesis than a plant is. Plants are limited. Um, into what they can absorb in the light spectrum. The bacteria can use um, pretty much the whole spectrum, including invisible. So it's it's better at collecting light, right? So and and it will also fix carbon and nitrogen. 
and it'll do it at the foliar, not just the root. You, you have a lot of nitrogen in the air, um, which plants can't normally access. Um, but with the bright bacteria, they can actually fix some of that nitrogen as a fertilizer, which means you can cut back a little bit of the nitrogen inputs, which is great, especially if you're growing outdoors in soil. So would you use this as a root feed, a foliar feed, both? You can do them? both. Um, it's funny, depending on where you go in the country, um, there are preferences. Some uh -huh. places, they you know, they don't like foliar at all. Uh -huh. um, some places, it's all they're all about foliar. Uh, California, we're not actually to put, allowed to put, uh, we can't even put foliar on the label. Uh -huh. They don't allow it on the label. So they don't want anything foliar. So if I'm doing a feeding with all my nutrients, would I put this in with that, or would I do this on a separate day, uh, a separate thing? You can you do it together. If you're doing a lot of synthetics, um, you, it might be better to, to do it as a separate. I'm, I'm okay with putting it together, but there are people that probably say if you're using a lot of heavy synthetics, sure, sure. do it separate. Uh, so if you're um, doing more natural type stuff in soil, yeah, though, in other words, you can do it the same day, just don't you know, necessarily mix them together. The okay, same. okay. Um, and you can do a foliar, you can do a drench, you can do a combination. Um, there's really no wrong way to use it except not use it. And then is, is, other than the synthetics, there's really nothing that it doesn't, you couldn't mix it up with and have a problem? Or yeah, you know, um, chemical pesticides, um, you know, could be a problem. Sure. Uh, anything anything meant to kill bacteria. It's so going to kill bacteria. Obviously, don't mix it with peroxide-based <laughs> Um Real important, always make sure your water is dechlorinated. Um, chlorine or chloramine are an issue. Uh -huh. They're there to kill bacteria. So, so you yeah, have to make sure that. Yeah, we water. actually make a. I don't, I don't, I don't think, think I have one here. We yeah. actually make a dechlorinator. No. <laughs> um, you put it in. Uh, it goes a long way. You just you just pour it in. It's a liquid, and you know by the time you put the cap on and put it down, you're you're ready to go. It'll knock out the chlorine and the chloramine. So if you're in city water, that's pretty much that's, a, that's a mandatory. It's mandatory. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's other ways to get it out. You can filter it out. Uh huh. Um, but that tends to be a little more expensive, ROs, uh -huh. heavy carbon, things like that. Now a lot of people say let it sit. Is that uh... So, interestingly, there's a thing there. So, if you if you have chlorine in the water and you let it sit, particularly mm -hmm. if you drop an air stone in and bubble it, sure. that chlorine will most likely all gas off within, let's say, 24 hours, okay. 30 hours. Mm -hmm. Chloramine does not. It really? sticks around longer. Chloramine is uh, is chlorine and ammonia bonded together, the molecules are bonded together. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder to get rid of. So even if you let it sit out, Good chance it's it's going to hang around for, for quite a while, so it's better to just be safe. Put so some in there and take it out. even now, obviously with this that's important, but probably for any kind of regimen you're doing with your plants, that's yeah, a good thing to idea. have. Yeah, it's okay. always a good idea to get rid of okay. the chlorine. Well, show us how it works. Okay, so in addition to improving the plant's ability to use available light for photosynthesis, so when you when you apply it, whether you you water it in or you foliar it, um, the bacteria will get up into the leaf to the chloroplast and it'll actually enable the plant to use more available light for photosynthesis. It will improve um, the plant's whole use of light, carbon cycling, so you convert more CO2 to carbohydrate, um, so you, it really cranks out plant sugars. Um, the bacteria will help fix nitrogen to the foliar, not just at the roots, so you're getting more use of atmospheric nitrogen as a fertilizer. It has bacteria um, that open up the xylem and the phloem, so it actually helps open up the structures inside the plant so that nutrient passes through better. Mm -hmm. Uh, it builds biofilms within the growth media, whether it's soil or something else, that help aerate it and hold form structure mm -hmm. um, where the bacteria is going to live and do its work. So that's going to help hold that in as well as like help space right. for it to work in? Yep. So okay. it will also hold water and nutrient in the root zone where it's needed so it's not just flushing through. So um, maybe in an outdoor situation is helpful for where you're not going to go straight through to right. your... You're conserving a lot more water. I got you. Okay. Um, it'll build biofilms around the roots that help protect them. It helps. It helps uh, slow down or, or, or prevent um, pathogenic bacteria and other, other pathogens from, from attacking your plant. Um, it's got chemotrophic bacteria, which are bacteria that process fertilizer to form the plant can more readily absorb. So even, even inorganics, even salts, it'll break down the salts um, and, and help just feed the plant. So, so the plant's like, energy all goes to growth. Even in a synthetic type situation, this is a very helpful yeah, It'll break down the salts. Maybe yeah, so, okay. yeah, so it's really, really good in all situations with any uh, we're going to just take about an ounce there. I assume that's a one ounce. Uh, I believe so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you can just swallow that down if you like. No. It doesn't smell it. great. And, <laughs> we love that smell. Um, so we're just going to do do like an ounce an ounce to a gallon of water. So not a lot. Not a lot. No, you can go heavier. I'll let you pour that in that spray bottle okay. so I don't pour it all over your table. Well, let me see. I'm going to pour it in um, here in a little. But the bacteria is doing a lot of work for you. Uh -huh. um, you could go a little heavier. I'll, I'll be honest with you when I'm spraying things down at home. Um, I, I go a little heavier than that. The worst that'll happen is 
you can't hurt anything if you use extra. Uh -huh. um, you just may be wasting a little bacteria. I gotcha. Um, but okay. it's all good. When you apply it to the plant, in a lot of cases, you can see see some results in a plant, especially a plant that's a little on the droopy side um, or, or a little underperforming. You can see some results in uh, uh, sometimes within, within an hour or two, but definitely usually overnight. Um, it goes through very quickly, so if we were to water it in, mm -hmm. And then sample from a leaf and do some DNA sequencing. You'd find you'd find it within 45 minutes. It's it's here. Wow! And wow. it'll go the other way as well. Uh -huh. So we're just going to do a little foliar with this. Um, the bottom of the leaves, top of the leaves. So. Sort of get it everywhere. Uh -huh. I mean, obviously underneath, you know, you get into the into the stone a little better. But you can really do the whole thing. You don't you don't need a wetting agent. Um, you know, you can do this with lights on. You don't have to worry about burning. What, uh, if you were growing outdoor, what, what time of day do you think you'd do it? Uh, you know, you, you probably don't want to do it like right at the peak of the heat of the day. Uh -huh. um, just because, you know, any any little drop of water can become a magnifying glass, sure. you know, with the sun's right overhead. But uh -huh. um, I use it on, I have some fruit trees and stuff I, I, in, in Florida, and I, you know, it's kind of like whenever I get out there, I don't, you know, I'm not worrying about it. So it's not real dependent on that. And if you were indoor and you've got some pretty strong lights, pretty close up, like this kind of situation here, would you turn those off while you were doing it because of the droplets or you think it'd be just fine? No, I think you'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. You know, and again, there's a, there's a lot of flexibility in how you, in how you apply the product. Uh -huh. um, we have a general guide that we, we put together, a general usage guide for this as well as mm -hmm. the other core products mm -hmm. in our line. but. You know, if you, there's so many different ways that people are using it. They're putting it in their teas. They're, you know, they're they're doing a, a spray at night. Some are doing it during the day. You know, I mean, there's just a lot of different ways to use it. None of them are really wrong. You'll get the effect. If you were doing it with your tea, would you do that as you were brewing up your tea, or put it in the end right after? You want to put it. So in get the your whole thing done, throw that in, then work with it. Okay. Yeah. If you if you bubble that, you're gonna there's some because there's a lot of different types and strains of bacteria in uh -huh. here. Um, if you bubble it, some of those are not going to survive sure. um, and without getting right into the environment they want to be in. I mean, it's that, that simple. You know, you just yeah. add it to your add it to your mix or do a foliar with it. It's a beautiful thing. Good to go. Yeah. I think we're good to go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Scott Burt. For more information about anything on today's show, go to our website, ocgfam.com. The OCG Fam Show. It's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you on Monday.